I did a PhD in plant nutrition after uh, working for four years in Fiji and that gave me an interest in tropical agriculture which I've more or less pursued since then and that's led me to um, working in a number of countries mostly with funding from the Australian Centre for International Agricultural Research and so it's given me the opportunity to work on a broad range of agricultural research and development projects um, covering oilseed rape and crop nutrition in China, uh, crop nutrition and pulse crops in Thailand and currently we're working in Bangladesh trying to develop what's called a system of conservation agriculture. And conservation agriculture is defined as crop production where you minimize the soil disturbance to place seed and fertilizer. You maintain the crop residue on the soil surface as protection against erosion and you diversify the crop. So this is a system that we're trying to introduce in Bangladesh. It's a system that is widely practiced in many other parts of the world, including Australia. Um, our farmers, especially in Western Australia, have practiced conservation agriculture as the main form of cropping for close to um, two decades now. So it's standard practice. Um, and a lot of the conservation agriculture worldwide is with big tractors, big farms, and our challenge in Bangladesh, as in it would be in India, is you've got lots of small farms. And so you have to try and work out how to develop appropriate machinery that you can scale down, uh, mostly for two-wheel tractors um, or small four-wheel tractors that can operate in small farms, small fields, but still apply the principles and that's what we've been doing in Bangladesh. Um, the visit here to India is really to talk about that work and um, it's a great opportunity to meet with uh, researchers in different parts of India find out what they've been doing, see what the relevance of the work in Bangladesh is and uh, what we can learn and what indeed we might be able to uh, transfer to um, Indian scientists. But the real challenge we think is not so much the research. We think we've more or less got a research package and a technology package worked out. The real challenge now is to try and uh, create some impact from that by uh, commercialising the technology, getting the private sector involved and uh, manufacturers, dealers, distributors and importantly in this part of the world because machinery is often too expensive for individual farmers to operate through service provider or custom hiring um, processes. So a small proportion of people own the machinery and then they hire it out on a fee for service basis. Um, but trying to get all the elements along the supply chain working, trying to build the demand, create the supply and then getting the private sector to a point where it's ready to take over and can see a profitable business in it to deliver benefits to farmers. That's our current challenge and uh, the most important part of ensuring we get good value for the type of investment that we've made in the research. Agriculture in Australia um, has a lot of strengths um, and a lot of those are relevant to India. Uh, for a start, most of our agriculture is dryland based and uh, so we've really learned how to use water efficiently and conservation agriculture has been one of those ways in which Australian farmers have been able to get more crop from each drop of rainfall. Uh, for example, 2002 in the West was one of our driest years. It had rainfall that was equivalent to 1969, which is legendary amongst farmers as being one of the worst years they ever had. 1969 created uh, a massive crop failure and uh, yields were very, very low. 2002, they were reasonable. Um, 
they were certainly lower than average, but most of the gain is attributed to conservation agriculture and the ability to plant crops earlier and get more reliable establishments, uh, have crop residues that uh, minimise evaporation loss of rainfall and generally just use all of that water more productively to produce grain. So I think that innovation around dryland agriculture has a lot of relevance in many parts of India. Also, Australian agriculture has been relatively free of um, subsidies, uh, government subsidies, and that's really forced our farmers to become uh, very innovative, to look very closely at their cost structures, um, and to become very conscious of uh, world markets prices and uh, how they can really minimise their cost inputs so that they uh, optimise the profit. And I think there are many lessons uh, from that uh, experience that apply in India and many other parts of the world as well.